Hi out there, you're listening to the Brave Files podcast, stories from people living courageously. Our goal each and every week is to share an inspiring story that will show you that bravery isn't always a big grand act. In fact, it's often small, seemingly insignificant steps that when combined with other small steps, create big change and growth. How many times have you thought to yourself that the problems in your life exist because there's something wrong with you? Well, this week's guest rejects the idea that people are broken. Instead, Carrie Hummingbird challenges each of us to dive deep into the fears and doubts that hold us back so that we can become the sovereigns of our own lives. In this episode, we tackle some big ticket items like perception and understanding that our perception creates our reality. Therefore, we have the power to shift our realities if we choose to do so. This is done by putting ourselves in uncomfortable situations that allow us to learn more about ourselves. Perception also has a tremendous impact on how we see others because we view everything from the perspective of our own experiences. Finally, we talk about the empowerment we feel when we stop trying to meet other people's standards and expectations. It's time to decide for yourself what your standards and expectations are, because the only person you're actually responsible for is you. When you choose to be responsible for yourself, you're able to be there for others in a much more important and impactful way. As conscious beings, we are able to listen and pay attention to ourselves, and this helps us create and maintain good relationships with not only ourselves, but others. Before we dive into this wonderful episode, though, I want to remind you about the So You Want to Start a Podcast live Q&A session. If you have ever wanted to start a podcast, or even if you're just curious about the process, how to get started, learning more about understanding why podcasts can help your business grow, please head on over to podcastpoweracademy.com right now and register for our next free Q&A session. These sessions are fun and engaging. They're not webinars. We actually chat and drop real knowledge. It features me and all of the other experts from the Podcast Power Academy. And we look forward to helping you get started on your podcast because the world deserves to hear what you have to say. All right, folks, grab something to drink and buckle up for this really wonderful episode. Love, knowing, and sovereignty. This is Heather Vickery, and you're listening to The Brave Files, stories from people living courageously. When we choose bravely in big and small ways, it powerfully elevates our lives. I hope these stories connect with you and encourage you to embrace bravery in every possible way, day after day. Together, we can build a movement of courageous living that enriches both our lives and our communities. And if you enjoy the show, I ask you to please share it with others. Maybe think of someone who you want to choose bravely right alongside you. Thanks for tuning in. Now here's the show. Hey, everybody. This is Heather Vickery. Welcome to this week's episode of the Brave Files podcast. I'm really thrilled to have you all here with me. And, you know, I have a question for you. How many of you think or have thought at one time that nothing was going right in your life because there was something wrong with you? Well, Today's guest has been in that same boat. Issues with her family, marriage, and everything else had her constantly working to fix herself. But after years of living with shame, blame, and unworthiness, she finally snapped and learned a new way to exist in the world. And I cannot wait to hear more about this story. Everybody help me welcome Carrie Hummingbird to the show. Carrie, welcome. Thank you so much for the introduction, and thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I've been really looking forward to this. So if you could very quickly just give both me and our listeners a little bit of a background on um, sort of what your life has been like and where your mindset was, and then we'll move into how how you decided to change that story. Absolutely. So for a good part of my life, I was in psychotherapy. Even from the point of being a little child, I had some early childhood trauma due to a marriage that my mom um, had, uh, first uh, 
first husband was my dad and he, my natural father, and he, uh, he was molesting me, uh, starting to. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. That's horrible. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. the second one was supposed to be better, but he was a uh, violent drunk. Okay. And so, Not you better. know, first five years, a little rough. And that has an impact in your psychology. Of course. How did your mom react to all of these things? I think my mom was uh, doing her best to navigate, um, trying, you know, in, in that time, it wasn't really common for a woman to support herself. That was emerging. That right. was new. Yeah. And she was doing her best to um you know, to navigate life and to choose correctly. And her, you know, her picker meter was a little off. So, picker <laughs> so meter. <laughs> her picker Sorry. meter was not working. <laughs> so uh, dad number three uh, showed up at uh, when I was five years old. And that really changed everything for me in a way that I had opportunities open to me that I wouldn't have had otherwise, okay. because I had a new possibility open up in my brain, you know, instead of, instead of having a totally cracked foundation, I had one piece that worked. And uh, so my dad was an excellent, my, my, not, my, my dad, my third dad, he was amazing and um, had him in my life until just a couple years ago when he passed away. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. Incredible influence. And that really helped. But from the time I was little, I was in some form of psychotherapy because of all the trauma. And then when I was 15, you know, that I was back in again because I was a teenager and all the stuff was coming out, you know, and. Yeah, <laughs> teenager years are hard. And I'm curious, I'm not a therapist, I'm a coach, but I'm not a therapist. Um, what, if anything, is the difference in psychotherapy versus just therapy? Well, I think it's all, it's there's all different, the same. yeah, I mean, there's, okay. there's Western psychology. And right. there's variance on it depending on what discipline the person studies. But I was uh, really blessed. My first entry into that was with a psychiatrist who was actually practicing psychiatry not it wasn't a drug thing at that time it was okay. a okay. deep psychological evaluation thing which is really what it should have been all along but it's gotten a little off track now so uh, I had a really good psychiatrist really deep dive on uh, my first time out at 15 that lasted me gave me some good tools and but I still had a lot to cope with in my in my because my inner workings you know my foundation was really wonky because of all that early stuff and I got this idea that I was broken you know I got this idea that there was I yeah. was problematic and however I was was causing a problem mostly for my mother and uh, that I needed to fix myself to be accepted and that lingered. That sense lingered and grew. Yeah, that's, ho that's horrible. It's heartbreaking to think of any young person feeling like, you know, and it's funny because we talk about, you know, I tell people adults all the time, like the only thing you can control and change is yourself. So, you know, in some ways, fixing yourself is a good thing, like changing your mindset and your attitude. But that's actually, that's actually what you ended up doing, right? It's not that there was anything inherently wrong with you, but the way you thought about it and the way you navigated it wasn't serving you. Well, and you know, you can think of this like when you plant the seed in a child's mind that, oh, some very bad things happen to you when you're little. And so you're a little bit broken. And so we've got to keep an eye on you. Oh, well, my goodness. That it makes to grow that seed, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, now we've got broken. signs. Like yeah. now you're a teenager and you're acting out and there's signs that you're broken. Now, uh-oh, and now we've got to go. So not to say that my my mom did anything, quote, wrong. It's just interesting how the mind thinks, you know, and how the mind puts associations between things. So I've spent a lot of my life exploring my mind, and I didn't actually get free until I started exploring my energy. Okay. <laughs> I so, love that. Can you tell us more about what that means? Yeah. So after decades of psychotherapy and a relationship that really mirrored my early childhood uh, relationships, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to stop fixing myself. And I just left my marriage and I left everything. And I said, not my kids. I mean, I kept my kids, but I right. left everything else. <laughs> I say that too. And I'm like, yeah. I burned my whole life down, except for the kids. Except for children. <laughs> I, I, did, I did okay with the kids, I think. <laughs> kept the kids. <laughs> They're pretty cool. So I said, okay, <laughs> I am just done with this whole model where I'm, you know, where I'm bad. If I'm bad, I'm just going to be bad. I might as well earn it, you know, as kind of where I was at that point. And what happened was I ended up meeting um, uh, my first guide was a yogi that had hair downs to his hips and did vinyasa to Led Zeppelin. That was kind of where I was at. I was like, that's amazing. That works that's for me. That's such an amazing <laughs> fiction, mental picture. <laughs> 
I was like, I love you, Crisby. But he told me the truth. He said, listen, you're creating this whole thing in your mind. I was like, wow, nobody told me that before. I just thought I was broken. <laughs> so I started opening to the fact, well, maybe I did. Maybe I'm creating this. And if I am, I can uncreate it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So, and that's when I met my first teacher, shamanic um, teacher, and what he taught his class was Quest for Authenticity. And what he taught me was that my body, that I was not what I thought I was. I thought I was this one solid thing. And when I had my first shamanic healing, I realized I'm not one thing. I'm a yeah. bunch of energy. I'm a yeah. bunch of stuff. And it's all in here. And I can decide what stays and what goes. I can track it. I can look within. I can find, you know, bugs in the software, take it out. I mean, all of a sudden, I became the programmer of my consciousness. And that was really different than the experience before. And so that's the path I've been on is is healing myself through my energy body and, and re- kind of getting rid of all the clutter that got inside yeah. of me, all these ideas and notions that are false, and getting to the essential truth inside of me. I love that so much. Or you became the programmer of your own body. That's so gold. <laughs> I absolutely love it. <laughs> I'm sitting thinking about that all for the rest of the day. So talk to us about once you learned that and once you started putting all of that into practice for yourself, how did it shift your life overall? Well, the interesting thing is uh, one thing my mom used to say to me over and over and over and over and over again was, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're but crazy. Why? Like as in just, you're funny, you're silly, which we all know now. Now that's not a, a no, PC term in, to say you're as crazy. As in you but. don't know what you're talking about and there's something wrong okay. with you kind of crazy. So that was my big hook word. I had to really overcome that word along with my diagnosis word. Because, you know, Heather, when people, when we get diagnoses, that really can screw with you. At first you think it's a blessing because you know what it is. But really it just traps you in another bigger box. So that's what happened to me. I was diagnosed borderline personality, which years ago on the Internet, if you oh, looked wow. that up, okay. you would have thought about boiling rabbits and Glenn Close. That's pretty horrible, you know, and that's not at all who I am. That's not even the closest truth. So I had to er- eradicate those words from my being. I had to like transform them, reclaim them, rebirth myself. So at one point I thought about that crazy word and I said, you know what? I am I am crazy because the world is insane <laughs> and yes, crazy and I'm in, it. <laughs> in an insane world equals sane. So you're correct. <laughs> I am crazy in the insane world that I live in. And that means I'm sane. I'm in I'm in right side world and everybody else is in upside down world because they're not loving each other. They're mean to each other. They're cruel. Yeah. And I'm in I'm in cra- I'm in the right side up world. So in your world, yeah, I'm crazy. But in my world, I'm completely sane. So I started realizing I could reclaim all these words that were used to limit me or to shame me or to judge me. And I could reclaim that for myself. So it's been a long process of reclaiming. I love that. And I just love the idea of reclaiming all of it, your body, your emotions, your mind, how you move through the world, how you present yourself. I do so much work with folks, particularly around um, not running away from their fears. So taking their fear, dissecting it, what's it trying to teach me? What are the lessons here? And then leveraging those lessons into making brave choices intentionally. And to me, that sounds exactly like what you did, just with different words around it. Yeah, you just go right into the heart of the fear. You know, (laughs) what's the heart of the fear? Oh, maybe I am crazy. And so I went into it. Well, maybe I am. Well, if I am, and then my mama said, you're making it all up. And I thought, okay, making it all up. Yes, you're right. I am making it all up. In fact, I am. And that's where I can make up something new that I like better. Right. So, yes, I'm making it all up. And I'm going to make up something different now that I like better. So that's really the journey here in life, actually. You know, we're here to we get set a, a set of conditions and then we can decide, do I like those conditions or am I really not down with those conditions anymore? And I want to change it. So you've right. got to be brave to go into the question, though. I love that you have the the braveness in there, the courage to change. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my whole jam is the brave. But I want to just for a second explore, because I hear, I hear you like, okay, well, sure, I'm making it all up. Except I don't know what your mom was accusing you of making up, but you weren't making up that you had been traumatized, that you had been molested and abused. 
right? Those things were facts. Yeah, they um, are facts. Well, the th- what's a fact, though? The fact is the thing that you remember. And when your parent um, ends up forgetting things, like that she called you crazy a million times a day and says, I would never do that. Mm-hmm. I would never call you so crazy. So she rewrote her own story yeah, to make she, herself feel better. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, no, you actually did, but never mind. I mean, <laughs> at, at some point, there's no point, you know, is this, you got to let yeah. go of the tug of war. Like, just set the rope yeah. down. And be done with that. I totally agree with that. Like somebody else's truth and reality doesn't need to mirror yours. Uh, th- there, There's room for all of us to have different memories and different realities because we do, right? That's what they say. There's three sides to every story. There's your side, my side, and what actually happened because we approach a situation from our own lived experiences, from our own biases or fears or concerns. And so we are going to experience it and perceive it differently than somebody else's. And that really is the download that I got from my higher guidance along the journey when I published my book, The Second Wave, is that we're each in a thumbprint suit. You know, I mean, thumbprints are unique, right? Everybody's got a unique thumbprint. There's never, ever one like it, and there never will be another one like it. So you slid into this thumbprint suit that comes equipped with certain glasses that only sees parts of reality and sees it in a really skewed way just for you. So you're you're never going to understand somebody else's reality because you're not in their suit. You'll never get it. And That's trying right. to get it is really interesting, you know, but you're, you can only understand the parts of the Venn diagram that overlap. You can't understand any of the rest <laughs> of it. Yeah. That's such a valuable takeaway for everybody who's listening. Um, stop trying <laughs> to reach a level of success or a level of acceptability or, or whatever it is that other people are defining, because it's just not possible. It's not possible. That's their You've got reality. You decide for yourself. That's their reality. You have to decide for yourself what will make you feel good. I do a lot of work in in work life balance, and people are like that doesn't exist. And I call it does exist, but it doesn't exist like the scales of justice, right? It's not like half your time is going to be spent doing one thing and half your time is going to be spent doing something else. It exists in how you feel when you check in with yourself at the end of the day, the week, the month, the year. Were you spending your time? doing things that you loved and moving you towards where you want to go in life or not. That's how you decide if you're balanced. It's an internal feeling. And it's not a set it and forget it, which I think drives people crazy. Because they want to set it (laughs) and forget it. Like, it's just a setting. And then I could just, like, go on with my life and go to sleep. Well, that's not the point of being conscious. Being conscious is being woke and listening and paying attention at all times to yourself so that you stay in right relationship with yourself every minute. There's no set it and forget it. There's no going to sleep. If you really want to walk this path, you got to wake up. Yep. I love that so much. So tell us about your book. You mentioned briefly that you'd written the book. What led you to writing the book? What's the book about? And where can people get it? Well, you know, as it turns out, being... um myself and my brain and all of the things that happened to me in my early development, it opened me for a really great possibility, which is that I can channel higher guidance, which is cool. Not everybody's able to do that. I'm able to do it. And so I I channeled higher guidance and the higher guidance said, you're going to write a new book. I said, okay, what's the book about? The second wave. Well, what's that about? The transformation <laughs> of human consciousness. Okay, cool. And so I literally just sat there And channeled it. I didn't read up on anything or go explore it or, you know, research it on the Internet. I basically sat and let the words flow through. And it happened in about three months. And so that book has been out since July uh, 2019. And it's going strong. International bestseller still. That's so awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. I love it. Um, I always like to ask folks, because I've written a couple of books, I'm in the process of writing a few more, and I have a ton of people who either have or want to write who listen. Uh, what was your writing process like? In this particular book, the writing process was to have the inspiration to write, then to follow that immediately to sit down and to let all the words flow out onto the page and to um, be present for that and then to not read. Okay, because if I start reading the words that are coming out, then I will get lost. I will lose the train, right? The flood. (laughs) And so I can't read the words while they're coming out. I've got to sort of navigate this trust that my fingers are typing the right words and spelling it correctly and not worry about it, you know, not worry about and then read it after when it when the flood has come through, then I can read it. Absolutely. That's one thing everybody says is don't try to edit while you're writing. Just get it out. However you want to write it. Do, the, do it that way. I love that. So 
tell me now, because you've, as you've gone through this process, this has become something that you help other people explore and do. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. What I do is I help people get comfortable exploring their own thumbprint suit journey. Uh, so getting comfortable trying to just have your own journey and not be worrying about, oh, does it match what everybody else says it's supposed to be like? Because that's really irrelevant. What's relevant is yeah. your inner journey, who you are, the way your perceptual filters are constructed, the life lessons, the soul's curriculum that you have to explore. That's what's relevant for you. And so I help people to navigate that journey, to learn some things about their energy body that they probably didn't know, to remove the clutter you know, because there's a lot yeah. of clutter that's not you inside of you, even if you don't realize it. And the part of this journey is getting that clutter out so that you can be clear and receive your clear guidance from your higher source uh, and whatever your soul wants you to know. So that's what I help people do is tap into that. And I'm a door opener. So nice. I'm able to open the door so people can, if they weren't necessarily able to see or perceive things before, because I'm a door opener, they can. So I can kind of traverse the worlds and I can bring people along with me so they can experience it as well. And then they can cultivate that ability to do it on their own or through meditations that I provide and things like that. If it takes, sometimes it takes a little while to cultivate that sure. ability. So yeah. that's what I do. I help people do their own journey direct with source. Yeah, I love that. I um, am a big intuition person listening to that inner voice and the intuition and moving it forward. I have to ask, this is so random. And by the time this airs, it won't be hot news anymore. But right now, when as of recording time, there's an article out about the fact that not everybody has an internal dialogue. Have you read this? <laughs> no, but it oh, doesn't surprise me. <laughs> it's wild. So I do. I have full on conversations with myself in my head. No words come out. I don't see the letters. I don't see shapes or colors. Like, I have conversations with myself all day long. And I just assumed everybody did that. And it turns out that they don't. About 80% of people do. But some folks do not have an internal dialogue. And so I'm like, wait, what? how do you connect with source? How do you listen to your intuition? Where, how does your intuition talk to you? And some folks are like, I feel it you know, in different parts of my body. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think that's fascinating. One thing I noticed about you, though, Heather, is that you're a messenger. So you're out here getting a message. You're getting a message to the world. You have a podcast. And I'm a messenger. And so it's very likely you and I operate very similar in that we have the similar capability to converse with our soul seamlessly through our minds, because otherwise, how are we going to do a broadcast if we have to get the information some other way? It would be really clunky, right? right? So yeah. so we have to have it this way. We, we have to be able to uh, tune in that way on the inside so that then the words can come seamlessly out when we're doing a broadcast together. So I, I feel like messengers, we have this tool with this ability because we need it. And maybe right. not everybody needs to have this. Maybe, you know, this is thumbprint suit journey, right? So everyone's here learning something new. And maybe their soul said, you know what? What would it be like? Could you find your way back to love if you didn't hear me in your head? That's kind of a big mm -hmm. lesson. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. It wasn't the question I intended to ask you, but then I couldn't help it because I'm a, <laughs> a little bit obsessed with this whole concept right now. And I need science behind it. So I have a certification in positive psychology, which just, you know, 20 years ago, people thought was a bunch of bunk, right? All super woo woo. Oh, like practicing gratitude can actually make you feel better, except it can. And science has proven that it does. Uh, and so I want science about this. So if anybody listening has science about the internal monologue dialogue thing, please call me, 312-646-0205. <laughs> please call me and share it. Um, so you also, Carrie, host a podcast that connects with people on this. Can you, can you tell us about that? My podcast is called Soul Nectar Show, and it, I interview people about their journey of awakening and to share insights and stories because we love to sit around the campfire and share stories. And so we share stories of connection with the divine, and it's really amazing yeah. all the different ways it shows up for people. I love that. And so uh, people can listen to that, I assume, anywhere they enjoy. Wherever they're listening to this podcast, they can listen to yours. Yeah, absolutely. And if they want to go to the <laughs> website, they can go to soulnectar.show. 
Yeah, it's a really great show. And I I love anything that sort of connects me in a bigger way to myself and to the universe and to, I I like you're using the word source. I'm not a religious person. I know lots of folks who are, but I do, I do believe there's bigger energy at play, whatever that actually means or looks like. So source is a nice, is a nice word. It it covers everything, I think. Um, I'm curious for you. As after you've gone through this transformation, I ask this question every week, uh, and the question is, what's been the biggest struggle? But I, I think that your struggle prior to having this awakening is pretty well defined. But since then, when things are are going well and you're you are in touch with all of this, what do you find to be your biggest struggle? Well, I think what's been really uh, I've been integrating is deep healing inside of myself and yeah you know it takes different forms but it's essentially soul integration is what we're working on now we're working on sovereignty and self-actualization it's the top of the pyramid for maslow's hierarchy of needs that's what we're working on right now those of us who can and uh and my own journey with this it's very intense because there's lots of things that come up and yeah. get raised and uh so i finished the first book which is an integration with uh you know, my guide. And now I'm working on this other book, which is the next book called uh, Love is Fierce, Healing the Mother Wound. And anytime Mm. I take a project like this, it's extremely intense. It's intense in my body. I'm a healer. And so I'm working with groups. I'm working with women to heal this for themselves. I can feel everything. And it's just, it's a lot of pain to go through. But on the other side of the pain is love and more love. So more freedom. So it's it's a worthy thing. But it is, every time I enter a project like this, I know I'm going to be going through it, you know? (laughs) So that's that's the hardest part, really for me now. Yeah. And that's such a gift for everybody listening. And I tell folks all the time, this is hard work. This is, you're not going to sit back and, and just ease through all of this. When I work with folks one-on-one in coaching, like it's hard work and you have to be ready for it. But if you are ready for it, it's so super worth it. It's worth it. And a lot of people, for example, are afraid of plant medicine, for example, which I do work with. Mm. And they're afraid of that because I might throw up. It's like, oh, throwing up is the least of this. You know, like that. <laughs> throwing up is the part you're glad happened, you know, because <laughs> because you got rid of it. You know, you purged it out and it's gone now. So throwing Can up- you tell our listeners what plant medicine is, though? And how you utilize it? Absolutely. So, I mean, I've worked um, with ayahuasca and I've worked with uh, some other plant medicines like that. And they're essentially teachers of your consciousness. So they help purify your consciousness. They help show you, uh, especially ayahuasca, show you what it is that you're doing to yourself that's so part of the fabric of your life that you don't even see yourself doing it. You're sabotaging yourself every day for more freedom. And you don't even know you are because you're just acting in the way that you thought was normal. But it's not not normal. And once you work with this medicine, you start realizing I'm not treating myself in a loving way. And I didn't even know it because I don't even know what love is. I know you deepen into this awareness of even more love. So it's a, it's a plant that opens you to be able to see that. And it gives you this realization that whatever you thought was true is, is really just based on what you learned so far. It doesn't mean it's true. That's right. Yeah, that's that's a deep thought. What you think is true is really based on what you've learned so far. It doesn't mean it's true. Exactly. Sit with that for a minute, folks. <laughs> I'm going to write that down and I'm going to sit with it. And I'm just going to come back to it all day because perception creates reality 100%. Uh, and therefore, you have power to shift it. Yes. And the way to shift it is to put yourself in uncomfortable situations yes, you haven't experienced yes. yet. <laughs> So that you can find out something new about yourself that you didn't yeah. know before, like right. having, you know, realizing that plants are not stupid and inanimate, you know, <laughs> like they yeah. actually have a lot of consciousness and a lot to teach you if you would be quiet and listen. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Does this work feel brave to you? Well, it's extremely courageous. I mean, yeah, I, I, I published agree. this book in July and I, I mean, just years ago, I, I changed my name to Hummingbird on LinkedIn and all of my contacts from Silicon Valley for decades that knew me as this very reliable technical writer, all of a sudden were like, your name is what? <laughs> 
Who are you? So what did you just happened? randomly pick a name? Like it just, it was a name that, that spoke to you? Um, no, I got a vision. I got a drum. I did a okay. drum vision to, to get my current house. And I was making the whole thing happen in my vision, in my mind. And at the very end, this, in, in my vision, I'm in the house, in the kitchen, and in the kitchen, this hummingbird rises up in rainbow light out the back window of the kitchen. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't make that happen. That's so cool. <laughs> There's a rainbow hummingbird in my vision. I did not make that happen. And that's it was cool. so awe provoking. So I, I thought, that's me. That's who I am. I love it. Is that uh, just a name change professionally or did you go all the oh, way? Oh, it's legally all the way. Name? Good for you. <laughs> it took I me a while. That. It took a while. What but, do you your know, kids what, think of that? You know, well, it's kind of the question, what's your name, really? You know, as a yeah. woman, especially, what's your mm-hmm. name? Especially you have, you get married, and then you have that person's name. And for me, I had three different dads. So what's who, what's my name? This is the first right. name that was authentically mine. And I am remarried now, and my last name is my husband's name, Sami. But even that is very precious to me, because sure. Sami means the light, in Cairo, yeah. which is my my lineage of healing, so it's it's all I love that. kismet. So I think we have to choose our, for ourselves, women. You know, we really need to stop thinking of ourselves as belonging to, to something other than ourselves and become our fathers sovereign. Or our husbands. Yes, yeah. yeah, and become sovereign and really own yourself, own yourself, love yourself. And, yeah. and know your wisdom inside of you, even if nobody outside even agrees. So, yeah, it's a very brave journey. I mean, I published this book I channeled, and I thought, well, how am I going to explain this? And it doesn't even matter because it doesn't need explaining. It's truth. When it hits somebody and it's truth, you know it's true. There's a knowing. So there's no more proving. There's not like, here's my 500 reams of of internet research and (laughs) and proof that I know what I'm talking about. Because you hit it. it, You know it in your heart when it's true. It's internal proof. It's internal proof. Yeah. I do that work with a lot of folks around limiting voices. Um, The stories that they tell themselves that get in the way. And so we will list all of them and then we will disprove them one by one (laughs) by your own personal experience. Right. But you're right. You can't Google that. That's not Googleable. That's not Googleable. Um, (laughs) But I, I, we like to disprove them and then we create what we call the truth about you list. So instead of the bullshit stories, the limiting voices that shut you down, you have the truth list that has been proven to be accurate by your own lived experience. So when you go back and look at it, it lifts you up instead of those voices that want to pull you down. So yeah, I love that. I suspect that you have some great ones. So I'm curious to hear from you. What are your daily grounding rituals? What's a non-negotiable for you? I open sacred space every single day because by opening sacred space, it's a little ritual for me. And ritual is powerful. Ritual is important because it brings your mind out of one state of consciousness, which is usually beta state, into alpha or theta states of consciousness where Mm. you can perceive things from the sacred. We really need the sacred right now. We need the sense of something meaningful and deep and powerful and wise in our lives right now. We need to move out of the small and the the insecure and into that deeper, wider ocean space. We need to leave the surface and go to the depths. And so every day I open sacred space, I even opened it over this call to be sure that I would be in the right frame of mind to be delivering a message from my soul and not my scared little personality, you know, who says, I don't know any of this stuff. So, you know, my soul knows all of this stuff. My personality says, wow, that was really interesting. What just flew out of my mouth. And I wish I had (laughs) recorded that, you know? (laughs) So I I have that feeling all the time. Like, I wish somebody was following me with a recorder. Um, (laughs) Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's really cool. Is there anything particular you do to open up sacred space? Well, I work in indigenous, ancient indigenous wisdom. So I call in the four directions. I ask for the okay. south, the west, the north, and the east. I call in the earth below and all the elements and the plants and the animals and the trees and the mountains. And I call in the earth and the sky, the sun and the moon and the stars above. And I call in the great spirit, God, source, creator, universe, whatever your word is, pop it in there. It's as simple as that. Call in your ancestors and guides and ask for support. Your ancestors can be a huge ally, even if the most recent generations of them are proving to you that maybe they don't know as much as you wish they did. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because like, 
back in your ancestry, there are ancestors who have huge talents and gifts and knowledge and wisdom to impart to you and are beyond the veil. And so they can see very clearly what's happening for you right now that they couldn't see when they were in a body. So they can be huge allies, especially with the ones that are still living who are maybe being a little obstinate right now Yeah, or yeah, difficult absolutely. in your life. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Carrie, how do you celebrate big wins, little wins, all of it. How do you like to celebrate? I sing. I love to sing. Lift your voice. I love voice. that answer. I Lift love it. your voice in song and sing sing something from your heart to open up the channels and to feel grateful for everything. Because too often we're on to the next goal. Where I, I find this in myself. I, I developed this pattern of achieving. You know, I went to an all, Ivy League college and I achieved that. And then I had this big corporate job in Silicon Valley and I achieved that. And I was a consultant. All these things I achieved, right? In my international mm-hmm. bezeling book. And you, you just achieve all these things. But then do you ever really sit back and go, wow, that's, that's I'm it. Yeah. so grateful for this meal uh-huh. in front of me, for this succulent taste of mango in my mouth. I'm so grateful for the sunlight on my skin. I'm so grateful for the beloved I get to sleep with. I, I mean, can we yeah. just be grateful for every moment yeah. and not be off to the races on the next thing? I love that. That's, yes, that's it. I mean, that's why I've written gratitude journals for adults and for kids and families, because I want to help more people have just that experience that you've mentioned, where you all of a sudden start to recognize all of the glory and beauty that's around you moment by moment, instead of constantly rushing from thing to thing. I love that. And you're not going to meet your soul in the stuff. So right. I also want to say that, you know, I I understand the fear and wanting to pr- prepare and, and not screw up and all that kind of stuff. And I spoke in front of some of my peers this year at the Evolutionary Business Council. They gave me the closing, Heather. So, you Whoa, know, like nice. how I important that is. I love it. And I it's was my so, fave. so concerned. You know, I was like, I don't want to mess this up. They're so concerned about conscious language and everything. So I had written out everything I was going to say. And that morning, my guide woke my soul, woke me up early and said, guess what, Carrie? You can throw that out. (laughs) I was like, what? What am I going to say? He says, let me take over. So like, basically, I said, well, how am I going to know what I'm going to say? He says, I'm in the now. Why don't you just be in the now with me and see what happens? And it was amazing. It was, they did record it. I can't wait to watch it back. But it was amazing. It was so incredible, the feeling in my body, the energy flowing through me from my soul, just that power and the knowing and the conviction and like above the surface of all the doubt and the confusion and the pettiness. I was in this expanded space of white light and it was so amazing. And that's what we can get when we slow down and get out of the grind and come into the now, into the presence. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really great. Well, as we um, come to the close of this conversation, which I have so enjoyed, you have such a beautiful, radiant energy and light, and uh, I resonate with so much of it. I get to ask a question that's near and dear to my heart, which is, what's your favorite charitable organization to support? Well, you know, right now I'm really passionate about No More Deaths. Uh, No More Deaths is a grassroots volunteer group that gives humanitarian aid to migrants who are crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. Mm. And their mission is to end deaths of undocumented border crossers. You know, it's just gotten very... just evil, really, is just the only word I can think. To not give food and water and medical assistance to people who are in a desert because you think you own the land. And this is a, you know, this is something I just disagree with. We don't own this land. This land owns us. borrowing it. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, so this is this is really a false idea of our Western culture, and it needs a lot of scrutiny. And we need to really be embracing being each other, you know, be our brother's keeper, be our sister's keeper, all of our Christian folk out there who, who say that, but then we'll turn around maybe sometimes and be like, no, we're not going to, you know, this is our land. Well, no, th- this is like we've got to really practice what we preach in every single moment. This is this is an example. Of, of judging our brothers for looking different than us and being from a different yeah. country. So this we don't own this. This is yeah. This is Thank all. Thank you for of sharing us. that. I feel all of that um, very aligned with that from a human 
equity standpoint. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. So folks, as I ask you every week, learn more about this organization. If you have something to give them, whether it's time, money, even if it's just social media shares and likes and letting other people know they exist, please make a point of doing that because we are all in this together and we cannot do better if we don't do it together. Carrie, can you give us your three words one last time? Yes. Love, knowing, and sovereignty. Those are really just beautiful words. They're majestic and um, they fill me with a, a little bit of an inner light. I, I, I so appreciate you sharing them. You did a really nice job of of talking, speaking to them as we move through the interview. So um, unless you have anything else you want to share on those, I don't have any other questions on them. I think that, that they're just lovely. Well, I just... Uh... I invite everyone, if they want to play my Love Mastery game, to get more insight into that. It's a freebie. It's a free download. And you can get it from my website at carriehummingbird.com forward slash play. All right. And what will they be doing? What is what is the game? It's an oracle game to test your intuition. But the, inter- I love it. It, but the interesting thing about it is more to find out what is my soul trying to teach me right now? <laughs> because yeah. you're not going to take away the challenge. I think that's, you know, we can be pie in the sky with thinking if I wake up, I won't have any more challenges. It's really just <laughs> kind of more like um, I can know why I'm having the challenge and what yeah. it is I'm practicing. Like I'm and practicing. Why it's worth it. Yeah, I'm practicing the being state. I'm practicing yeah. how to be loving and compassionate. I'm, I'm practicing how to be present. So you can find out more about why it's happening and that can help you accept it a little bit more. And what's that website address again? It's carriehummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I hummingbird.com forward slash play. Awesome. You well, do I have know to that get I'm your own dice. You have to get your own twelve sided dice to roll the dice. But um. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good. That's a good bit of information to have because I bet most folks do not have twelve sided dice. It's a rarity, but it's so fun to roll the dice playing this game rather than pick a card. I think. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll go out and get your 12-sided dice and then check out this link. I love it. Uh, Carrie, this was really a lot of fun. I, I love the work that you're doing and the energy you're putting out into the world. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Thank you for having me on the show and blessings to everybody out there. All right, folks, I loved sharing this conversation with you. Thank you so much for being here with me and part of this brave journey with me. Uh, We couldn't do it without you, and we do it for you and for your energy and for all of the brave choices you're making every single day. I'd like to invite you to join us in our Facebook group, Brave on Purpose, where we are coming together collectively as a network of humans to help each other rise up and do the hard things together, start new businesses, change your life, all that fun stuff. We're having a great time over there. Just pop over to Facebook and search Brave on Purpose and you can find us. I'd love to have your feedback on this episode or anything else that you've learned here at the Brave Files or whatever you want to share. Just give us a call at 312-646-0205. And last but certainly not least, if you like what we're doing here, we need you to join our Brave Movement and support us on Patreon. We want to continue putting this incredible work out into the world, and we want you to be part of this Brave journey and part of this Brave Movement. You can check out patreon.com slash bravefiles to get all the details and find a level that works for you, and you can support us and we can support you, and it'll be super fun to do it together. So this is Heather Vickery reminding you today and always to go out and choose bravely. Hey friends, I wanna share something really exciting with you. We already know you enjoy listening to podcasts because you're listening to this one, but I'm also betting you enjoy audiobooks. And hey, listen, if you don't already enjoy audiobooks, then it's time to check them out. That's why I'm really excited to share Libro.fm with you. They are an incredible new platform for listening to audiobooks. And by choosing Libro.fm, over other audiobook services, you are supporting a local bookstore of your choice and investing in your local community. Libro.fm offers over 150,000 audiobooks via their primary platform, which by the way, they built with love and from scratch because they're a small business also. They even offer bookseller recommendations for great audiobook options. You can sign up right now 
via www.vickeryandco.com slash LibroFM. That's vickeryandco.com slash L-I-B-R-O-F-M. And when you do, you'll get one free audiobook of your choice and the proceeds will go to your favorite local bookstore. Now, check what I just said there. You're going to get a free book and the proceeds are still going to go to your local bookstore because Libro.fm makes sure that their booksellers get paid even when they give a promo to customers. I've listened to over 20 audiobooks this year alone. I especially love listening to memoirs read by the author, and it feels great knowing that all of my purchases support my local bookstore, The Book Table, in Oak Park, Illinois. Libro.fm. The same audiobooks, the same price, but a completely different story. Check them out right now at vickeryandco.com slash Libro.fm. You've been listening to The Brave Files, stories from people living courageously. To learn more about the show, find our show notes, or get some great bonus content, visit thebravefilespodcast.com. And we'd love to know what you think. You can give us a call at 312-646-0205. Let us know your thoughts on the episode, the show in general, or maybe share with us how you're out choosing bravely. This episode is brought to you by Vickery & Co. Success Coaching, coaching that helps you maintain a life well-lived and a business well-run. Learn more at vickeryandco.com. Our music is produced by Matt Lewis. Follow him on Instagram at mattmmusic or visit his website, theunionband.com. We couldn't do any of this without our extraordinary audio engineer, Andrew Olson. Learn more about him and check out his work at findandrewolson.com. And special thanks to our associate producer, Kim Statler. I'm your host and executive producer, Heather Vickery. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week.